Good morning, guys. Welcome to another episode of Xiao Talk Show. Today is September twentieth, Friday, two thousand nineteen, eight o'clock a.m. San Francisco time. Good morning, Mister Splend Splendid. Good morning, Mel Cat. So, Mister Splendid says, "Hello, Xiao. I like I like when you talk about shortcut optimization, like key sequences." What do you think about Mini Eight layout? Okay, let me answer that. And Mister Splendid says, "I found recently that Ergo Docs Easy and many other popular do-it-yourself keyboards has not enough standard-sized keys for Russian alphabet on the right side." That is true. Many of these、uh, do-it-yourself keyboards, they Uh, let me show you the keyboards. So many of them, they have many. They they don't. They have too few keys. So for example, do-it-yourself keyboards. So I have a、uh, collected a bunch here. And、uh, many of them, you know, it became a fashion that they only have like sixty keys or even fifty. For example, Ergodox, Ergodox is seventy seventy six keys. Now, for reference, the PC, the normal PC keyboard,、uh, for example, like you know the full size, they usually have hundred, uh, hundred and five keys or hundred keys, something like that. So a a full size keyboard had has a hundred keys, and typically the the compact keyboard, such as uh such as this one. They got,、um, for example, this one got eighty nine keys, so ninety keys. Let's let's look at another one.、Uh, let's look at this one, Keystone keyboard. Okay. So anyway, nine so ninety keys or eighty keys. How many keys? Jeez, I need to find out how many keys. So guys, uh, what other topics? Type it, okay? Type it. We need topics to talk about. So Vortex, this one is got shit. Why? Why didn't I list number of keys? Um, this one is Vortex Race. This this one's got a um uh driverless. Programming that means to program the keys, or you know, for example, set caps lock to control. You don't have to launch any software. You just press keys to to、uh, set a key or remap or swap keys. So let me find out what about this one. Okay, so this is a full size keyboard,、uh, about hundred and five keys. I want. I need to find out what's the compact. So look, let's look at Wootin. Now Wootin is very interesting one because they've got analog, analog keystroke. It's actually I think it's actually digital, digital. But however, by analog they mean that that how much you press down is measured. So you can so so you can、um, the process of pressing a key down is kind of a control. It's not just on and off. So you have a、uh, different levels of control. For example, you can you can use one key as a gas pedal in in some driving game. For example, so they call it analog mechanical switch. The actual mechanism may not be analog. They just use that word so it makes sense to people.、Uh, so let's look at oh yeah so、uh, wait so why can't I find Compact keyboards, okay.、Uh, Happy hacking, for example, it's only got something like sixty, sixty keys. Not, not enough, okay. Anything less than sixty is barely minimum. It's actually not good.、Um, God, when I need to know number of keys, I don't have it. Usually, I'm meticulous about 
<laughs> making sure I have the number of keys information because it usually it's hard to count. So this one is a compact keyboard. I have it. I did a review, video review. This ultimate hacking keyboard. This one has got 64 keys. Okay, that's not enough. 64 keys. That's not enough. When you have, when you like a keyboard that does not have enough keys, then what you want to do is you want to buy a programmable keypad, such as any one of these. This one is got display on each key. And there, and by the way, this is these days. These are not very expensive. For for example, this one is only hundred hundred dollars, hundred fifty, hundred fifty dollars. Uh, you know, and this one is similar. So when you like a keyboard that does not have enough keys, you want to buy one of these uh, programmable keypads. There are many varieties here. I have it on my website. So let me post my website so you you guys can check it out. You know, buy it on my website so you support me. Uh, let me paste it, and I I will get to the question. Wait, am I talking? Yes, I'm talking, and am I alive? Yes, I'm alive. Okay, good. So, Mr. Splendid says, uh, "What about what do I think of Mini Eight, Mini Mac Eight layout? I don't think it's good. I'm going to let me talk about that. Okay. Uh, so, so first of all, yes, it's true. You know, so it's a fashion. It's it's kind. It it became a fashionable today that many of these keyboards uh, does not have many keys. For example, this one." Is only got fifty four keys. Now Ergodox has got seventy seventy six keys. Seventy six is barely enough. Okay. I would still. I mean, for me, it's not still not enough. I would need, for example, I showed this many times. I would need to get. Um, let's see. Uh, I I need to would. I would need to get a programmable keypad like that. Okay, so uh, so yeah, so one solution you can do is just to buy a programmable keypad. Now there are many solutions. Like, by the way, if you have questions, ask. Okay, I mean this is a good time to ask all your keyboard questions. Like when I talk, you have a question, just ask, so we can talk about it. So w so when I talk about programmable keypads, there are many. You can buy one of these. The all these are programmable keypads. Now here's the thing. Now if you don't want to spend that much money on a programmable keypad, usually these are anywhere from eighty dollars to hundred fifty. Okay, these are programmable keypads. Now, if, so if you want to save money, so what you can do is you buy a uh, you buy a numeric keypad such as these. These are not programmable; they are just like number pads. So you buy one of these, then then you can use your operating system, may it be Linux, Mac, or Windows. You can program it. Of course, this is uh, this is not this is a programmable keypad is much better. But if if you don't really want to spend that much money, then you can go with this uh, numerical keypads and use your operating system to program it. And I have a um, article that teaches that that teaches you how to program number keypad as function keys. So, uh, you know, for Windows, basically for Windows, you use auto hotkey. For Mac, you use um, you basically use this uh, Cairo binder, okay. And on Linux, you know, there are solutions. Um, I show it here. Good morning, Green Deck. Okay, so let me finish talking about uh, the topic. So let me say hi to Green Deck. Thanks for advice in previous show for not swapping control and caps. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, you had it swapped for three months. Now switched back. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a good thing. Uh, so 
so splendid as ask about the mini Mac 8 key layout okay let me t uh, tell you what that is so you go to my keyboard blog then you go to layout this section okay uh, and you go to alternative layout so you have QWERTY you have Vorac you have programmer Vorac you have mini Mac Cooper asset Norman Cormac and and quite a few others okay so there is one of them is mini Mac so let me talk about mini Mac so many of these keyboard layouts they are designed so that they are designed so that if you already know how to touch type on QWERTY then supposedly it's easier to learn this new layout okay all these uh, for example all these uh, normal layout asset layout workman uh, in, well mo mostly in particular Cormac Cormac is designed so that it changes 17 keys from QWERTY for example all the red uh, keys you see here they are different from QWERTY but all the white keys are the same as QWERTY so the the idea is that when you already know how to touch type on QWERTY and if you want to switch to a efficient layout then you can switch to Cormac uh, because it's supposedly it's easier to learn because you don't have to learn every key you, you just learn some some of the keys are changed 17 of them that's the idea and but but in my opinion that's not a good uh, idea because when you want to learn because first of all it's not necessarily easier fewer keys does not necessarily mean it's easier to learn okay in fact I have people I mean somewhere on my blog I've 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 shown the people other people's blog they try to learn Comac uh, and they he also tried to learn Vorac and for him Vorac is easier to learn Comac is harder to learn so anyway I don't like the idea you know they I don't think it's good I don't like Comac okay so this is my biased opinion but anyway so now let's talk about mini Mac so mini Mac is the same idea you know mini Mac the idea of mini Mac is that actually the mini Mac layout they have several versions the first version only change four keys from QWERTY okay so this is extremely easy to learn this is easy to learn for sure you know you only swap two two pair of keys so t in total four keys are changed okay then they have a different version okay they, they have like several versions like progressively more change change number of keys so the first one is changing four keys the second one is changing one two three four five six seven eight eight keys then uh, let's see another one is one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve then another one twelve keys so you have these three different versions the idea is is that you start with the easiest version you know assuming that you already know how to touch type on QWERTY so you switch to this version you know you just learn uh, change your muscle memory for four keys so after a week maybe after a week you will be okay then if you want to get if you want to be more efficient then you use a 12 a 8 key 8 key change version then you later on switch to 12 keys changed version that's the idea uh, and to me I don't I don't I don't think it's, this is a great idea okay if you really want to uh, be proficient in you know if you want a proficient layout you want a efficient layout just go go to a layout of your choice my choice is Vorac so you you pick a layout you like and just 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 spend one month one hour a day just you know learn that layout I mean so the the mini Mac you know the idea of switching gradually I, I suppose that works but you know uh, I don't think it's 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 
that I mean the by the design I mean I don't think it's that practical okay I mean the idea is that you are a busy person you have to type every day you know other you know your your income depends you on you typing every day so you cannot have one month vacation you know <laughs> being unable to type or type slowly therefore they created this minimax so you you can just change a few keys then you when you are good then you switch to more keys it's a it's you know it's kind of a fancy idea but it's it's not i don't think it's uh uh realistic I mean, it work for sure, but I don't think it's necessary. Just just pick a layout you like and and spend one month do it. Okay, so that's my opinion opinion about the mini Mac layout. Uh, yeah. So Splendid says, by the way, Ergodox has a a nice online layout configurator. It's not good. Okay. Uh, you, uh, because for example I have an article on that uh, let me show you the best thing okay you see this subject matter is about once you have a programmable keyboard what is the method to program the keys now there are several methods one method is um, let me let me talk about them okay so but let me read the comments first let's see what else other topics Uh, by the way, if you want to learn Russian layout, why don't you use oh Russian? Yeah, Russian is a problem. Yeah, Russian, you know, typing Russian always have problems because you have you have to constantly switch uh, between QWERTY, you know, English layout and Russian layout. Is that true? I mean, is that what you do? Uh, so Greendex says, I actually had a swap. Uh, Greendex says, why even switch from QWERTY? Is that bad? Oh yeah, QWERTY is bad. <laughs> Don't that? Yeah, that's the first thing you learn when you study about keyboard efficiency and all that. QWERTY is pretty bad. You know, so I I talked about this topic about a few months. You know, uh, last week or something. So let's go to let me let me let me show you. Okay, because that's a I because I talked on that video I talked about 20 or 30 minutes on on whether you should switch to switch your layout and what layout should you switch and whether you should learn touch typing so that's one hour talk about that uh, so let me show you what um, search for Comac okay so this 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 one okay uh, wait so let's show it so this is 2019 August 21st. Okay, go to YouTube and watch this one. Uh, Green Deck, if you are interested. Okay, so because this this video talks about all this uh, layout and uh, touch typing issues. Yeah, yeah. So check out that video. Uh, okay, so let me answer the question about online configurator yeah so um, so this is about so let's go back to keyboard close that uh, okay so wait yeah close that uh, yeah let's go back to keyboard okay back to my keyboard block and we want to go to um, key binding uh, is it key binding or layout? Uh, let's see layout. Uh, no, it's actually in um, design. Okay, so on this page, it's an index of articles related to keyboard design, the physical keyboard design, the key switch issues, the N key rollover issues, which is electronics the key cap technology key label technology i mean there are many details like when you actually study the keyboard like you 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 get deeper and deeper like over the past you know 20 30 years i you know i learned every time i learned a new thing about keyboard and didn't know before and you know i i was surprised so anyway one of the topic about keyboard is firmware 
Now, a firmware is a piece of software that usually it's embedded in a chip inside the keyboard. Because when you press a key, you know, there's a, there needs to be a small chip that processes the information and send it to your computer. So that, that piece of uh, software on a chip is called firmware. Now, for programmable keyboards, firmware is all important because this is because it is a firmware that does the reprogramming reprogramming of keys now and each programmable keyboard they are dif they, they have different capabilities okay this is important now if you don't study keyboards you may not know because for example today you have lots of gaming keyboards you can like program macros then you also have lots of you know programmable keyboards for example let me show you uh, programmable keyboards with on onboard memory all these okay now when you buy a programmable programmable keyboard you have to make sure they have onboard memory because there are some gaming keyboards such as those made by Razer they suck okay they 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 sometimes they don't have onboard memory or they have software on the keyboard that prevents you to actually store things in the memory they want you to connect to the internet the cloud you know they want to register they want you to register account otherwise you know and and, and install their software otherwise you cannot reprogram your keys things like that you know th those are bad you want a keyboard programmable keyboard when you buy a programmable keyboard make sure they have onboard memory like I, I you know so I studied this issue I give you the conclusions you know you can see on this page you, you can read about it just go to my website so these are the programmable programmable keyboards with onboard memory all these are good okay the the goal of this thing is that basically you don't you don't want you don't need internet okay you don't want them to depend on internet so you don't have internet you can just program your keyboard bring to work plug in and your work you know all your custom uh, keys your work you know you bring it to your friend's house your work your work anywhere you know because it's programmed inside the keyboard that's what you want so all these are programmable keyboards okay uh, and now let's go back to the firmware now f different programmable keyboards they have different capabilities okay this is another important thing for example many uh, keyboards allows you to swap keys remap keys for example you want you want F2 to do uh, some other thing a macro or something okay you can do that but they are not the same okay so they have different uh, capabilities for example modifier keys okay what if you want to remap modifier keys for example you want to swap caps lock with control or alt or windows key things like that so that's another thing so some some programmable keyboard can do that some cannot okay so this is this is important once you get into detail for example gaming keyboards typically keyboards you know market marketed to gamers you know they are programmable but they uh, but they are they they are not designed uh, when you want to do something they cannot do for example typically suppose you want uh, f11 and f12 to be volume down and volume up sound level up sound level down okay f11 f12 on gaming keyboards typically you may not be able to do it to do that to do that depends on the model you know depending on who, who is making it so 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 these are some of the issues you might be concerned now if you are a programmer or Emacs user your need are typically different from those gamers for example if you are a Russian you, you know you uh, from Russian you use Russian layout you want a key to for example to swap layout between English and Russia you know you want to do suppose you want F11 to to set it to English layout F12 to Russia layout now for gaming keyboards you cannot do that 
yeah, it's almost so you know usually all the gaming keyboards how, however fancy like programmable and lights and so that <laughs> usually they don't have that capability in so in in this case you want you want a programmable keyboard such as such as all uh most of these will can do that you, you know you, you can press a key to to swap the entire layout for your keyboard so there are these different capabi capabilities uh, you uh, might be of interest, you know, depending on what you want your keyboard to, to do, you know, whether you are a programmer uh, or a gamer or you want both, you know, so basically the more powerful they can do everything, you know, so the, the one with the most programmability is this one, okay, the ultimate hacking keyboard. I did a re uh, video review. Th this one it's got the best programmability, the power, the power of, of how, you know, what things you can program, okay. And, uh, but however, this keyboard do not have driverless, it's not driverless programmable, meaning that every time you want to change some keys, you need to launch the software, okay. So you need to like start the software, then it's very easy you know change keys and press set okay then closer you know you can quit the software then it's set in the keyboard then you can bring to work and so on but it's not driverless programmable meaning that you have to launch the software to program it so that's one way to program the keyboard driver driverless programmable is the best okay so anyway we talked about firmware capabilities you know what kind of changing keys they can do that you know you can read it for detail then let's talk about uh, okay another issue is uh, we talked about this uh, you know firmware pro programmable keyboard so you might be thinking you know maybe you are using Linux or maybe you are using Windows with uh, the auto hotkey or Mac with Carabiner you know you can already program the keys via the operating system. Why do you need to buy a programmable keyboard? Because you can already, for example, I have the Carabiner here. Car Carabiner, which is, um, yeah, th this this software, you know, um, you know, it changed some keys. So you might, so, so why do you need a program programmable keyboard? <clears throat> Now, programmable keyboard is better. It's better, okay, because programming via the operating system always have uh, they always have glitches, issues. Like sometimes it doesn't work. Like de depending on the operating system, also depends on you know which software you use to program it. So, but typically they always have little sometimes glitches. Um, for example, on Windows, for example, if you use auto hard key. But sometimes when you launch your register edit, okay, when you launch that with a privilege, you know, uh, admin privilege, then all your auto hotkey does not work. So when you when you launch, uh, for example, rest register edit, then your your auto hotkey key key binding stop working stops working because. Because you need to launch auto hard key as a, a privileged user in order to do so. So, you know, that's an example of a glitch. But however, if you have your own programmable keyboard, it's, it always work, always work. Because the signal sent to the computer is always the key you want. So that's an example. Same thing on Linux, you have issues. For example, typically on Linux, you program the keys in X11. But then every, every time you switch to the virtual console or in the boot screen or single user mod, then all your keys doesn't work. So if you are a Russian programmer, for example, you want you have a key that switch between English and Russia. But then when you are in a virtual console, you, all your keys doesn't work. So you have to, you know, then, then it gets more complex to program, you know, so things like that. On the Mac, it's um, it's less of an impact. But anyway, you have this issue, okay? So the best thing is to get you want a programmable keyboard, 
okay with with onboard memory so buy it okay buy it <laughs> buy it for my website okay let me show the let me paste you the link um, okay and uh, okay so that's about that now the next thing we're gonna talk about is the next thing we're gonna talk about is um, where is the where did my page okay the next thing about firmware is what is the method um, what what is the method to program the keys you see once you have a programmable keyboard how do you program the keyboard what's the method okay one of the best feature best method is driverless programming I already talked about that meaning that if you want to ch if, if you want to change for example F2 to be control C control C for copy for example F2 you press F2 it does control C if you want that you don't have to launch any software you just you just press you know press some key program, you know like start programming key combination typically and then press F2 then press the key you want you know the combination then press start programming then that's set then now you when you press F2 that does control C now that is the case with my keyboard Kinesis okay I, I can do it right now uh, but I don't want to because you know this camera sucks okay this camera is Logitech 920 and 922 okay it sucks it cannot focus so so anyway so I you know on this my Kinesis advantage I can just uh, press keys to program it I don't have to launch any software they also but they do uh, allows you to have software uh, way too so anyway so driverless programming is a great feature to have it's not necessary you know because typically you program it once and you know it's not something you have to do all the time unless you are designing uh, shortcut layouts you know or you, you if you are using Photoshop you constantly you are you, you are trying to design a system of you know shortcut layout for Photoshop for example and you are not decided you know what shortcut you want to be yet so every day or every few days you have to constantly constantly change anyway so driverless programming is great feature okay driverless programming then you have graphical software uh, graphical software is typically like a gaming keyboard like this one I showed you know this 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 gaming keyboard this this one is Logitech um, 910 9, actually all Logitech's gaming keyboard they have the same uh, uh, same programming software the, the you know the driver you know on, on Windows you call them drivers so the interface is the same so and it's very good Logitech I trust Logitech okay if you want them if you want to buy a commercial game gaming keyboard I recommend Logitech I have many uh, Logitech on my website uh, for example PC keyboards I have some reviews of them uh, somewhere here Logitech this classic 910 and Logitech 513 Logitech 810 you know they are pretty good I do not never buy Razer okay never buy Razer and I would I do not recommend Corsair neither I trust Logitech so Logitech gaming keyboard so how, so we are back to the topic of how do you program the keys so graphical software is very popular uh, okay and and very good because they give you an overview all, of all your keys you know in one shot this, this in this aspect is better than driverless because driverless you know once you program many keys you forgot which key does what and that's a headache you know usually that's a headache to figure out so you usually they they also feature a gra graphical user interface so that you can see all your keys you know so so you want graphical software and if you have driverless programming that's better 
Now the worst case is updating firmware. Okay. Now that is the example of the Ergo docs, as far as I know. So what does updating firmware mean? Like 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 this. Okay. This is uh, one of the Ergo docs website. Uh, this one is from Ergo docs Infinity. Okay. So you go to a website, you know, it's kind of tedious. You go to their website, then you drag the keys, you know, you create a layout, okay. Then you click save, then it, it will create a file, you download that file, then, then, then you follow some instructions, you, uh, how is it done? Yeah. Can you explain? I mean, you got Ergodocs, right? Mr. Splendid. So basically, so you download the file, that's your layout. Then you start up the firmware updater, some kind of software, you know. You have to download a firmware updater. Then you launch that. Then you say change layout. Then you select the layout you just created. Then it updates it. Uh, it updates the firmware. Then you can quit quit all the software then it's now now it's programmed the way you like so this this is the worst this uh, this way so mr. splendid says I have 10 keyless master keys pro by cooler master yeah okay so cooler master is I, I also kind of trust uh, but actually I don't have any cooler master keyboard but um, Cooler Master, so you have the 10 keyless Master Key Pro. Okay, Master Key Pro. Okay, so that's a, you know, gaming, that's designed for gaming. Yeah, 10 keyless, this one. Also, they also feature, you see, they say change your settings on the fly. No need to first with proprietary software. Or adjust all of your preferences right on your keyboard. That means they have driverless programming. Yeah, so it's very good. Uh, so any uh, any other questions posted? Okay, let me let me check out the comments. Green deck. Uh, so Pablo says, "Hey, good morning, Pablo. Pablo is from. Hey, Pablo, you are from South America, is that right? Like what country? I think it's South America." Uh, what would you do if you didn't touch type and you want to learn? I mean, Vora quality. Uh, okay, max efficiency, reasonable le learning time. Okay, yeah, like you know, like I mentioned, you should check out, you know, check out the um, check out this talk show. Okay, I mean, if you have time, you know, if you have extra time, check out this August twenty one twenty. Uh, 2011 2019 August 21st uh, my video that talks about a lot about that but let me tell you so to learn touch typing there is no shortcuts okay <laughs> it's like there is no shortcut to good things you have to spend one hour a day and uh, for a month then you'll be good yeah one hour a day for you know, or half a how let's say half hour a day okay and and do it for a month oh pablo is from spain europe okay great so you if i have any uh question about spain i'm gonna ask you okay <laughs> pablo uh so anyway so to learn touch typing you uh let me show you okay let's go back to keyboard uh i have so on this page it's all about touch typing so you just you have to spend 30 minutes practice you know 30 minutes a day for at least one month then you'll be you'll be faster than 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 before you were touch typing okay so i have like um how to touch type basically and i also give you um so this is the basics of how to touch type Okay, let me let me talk about this for one minute. Basically, the prince, the the only thing, the principle is the only. If you can, if you, if there's one sentence you can remember about touch typing, it is this. Okay, always use the correct finger for each key. 
okay in touch typing every key is supposed to be typed by a specific finger so the the fundamental principle about touch typing is always use the correct key to press a partic correct finger to press a particular key you can forget about all tutorials everything else just remember this one every time you press key any key you press always use the correct finger you can just remember this one thing if you are in an island no books no nothing <laughs> this principle you by this principle you will learn touch typing okay but anyway so that's the principle and I talked about here but um, but I also have some websites web typing typing tutorial website you know these three are good ones and there's also typing speed websites so these four are good ones so just go there and check it out you know this yeah it's better it's good to follow you know they they have like you know sequential lessons you know you, you just go there practice for half hour a day uh, so let me type that Uh, so whether to choose Vorac or not, it's it's a bit complicated. Okay, so it's really it de depends on you. Uh, for example, I would tell you to go Vorac because I use Vorac since 1994 and it's very efficient. But there are trade-offs. For example, once once you learn Vorac, you will forget. You will forget. Uh, usually you know you you don't remember touch typing quality anymore so every time you go to library or use your friend's computer you cannot touch type that you you, ha you have problems like that you know you in a company you cannot use other people's computer because you don't touch type there well you can still hunt and pick you know so you got little problems like these so ultimately whether it's worth it or not it's up to you now if you mostly just um, you know, mostly if you are just a programmer by yourself, you don't use any other keyboards. You you know, then then yeah, and 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 also if you prefer efficiency, then yeah, you know, Vorac. Oh, Mister Splendid says CM Masters CM Master Key Marker sucks. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Uh, yeah yeah so so you know the programmable you know although they are all programmable keyboards but they they do have differences like once you get once you start to use it you know you know this this one doesn't do can't really do what you need to do so that's why I said you know the best if you know if we consider the programmable programmability of a keyboard this one is the best the ultimate hacking keyboard their you know their programmability is just fantastic I have the you know so I, I did a video review of it you know you, you guys can watch go to go to my website and that the video will show uh, so George good morning George and George is from Sacramento am I correct George says Mac OS version of Core Mac doesn't remap caps lock, so haven't tried it. Oh, okay. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So that's a uh, that's another issue with Core Mac. So yeah, I didn't know. So, so I'm surprised. Okay. So yeah, they didn't remap caps lock. So Mister Splendid says I just use it because it's mechanical and ten key keyless. But I do not use its macro functions. Okay, so but you are. Do you have Ergo Docs, or are you thinking of buying one? Um. So Melcat Melcat says today's topic is Richard Stallman's parrot. Does he have a parrot? So did they really engage in? in uh, okay. Um. <laughs> you know uh, anyways let's talk about keyboard for today oh George is from Perth Australia oh sorry about that geez I forgot the 
So who's the other guy on? <laughs> so I was going to say Australia, but I thought it's Sacramento. Uh, record play bind to any key. Okay. So record play does that consider also time? Like uh, it plays with the same speed as you press it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess that's not so not so good. Um, yeah, but okay, so that's about all the keyboards, I guess. That's about the keyboards. So is there any questions, anything else interesting? Um, Richard Stallman, let's talk about that another day. You know, uh, it's, it's kind of very touchy. Uh, um, yeah, let's talk about him the, another day. So Meerkat, are you using <laughs> Are you using a mechanical keyboard or? Uh, so, Dingo, oh, Dingo, Dingo, Dingaroo says, if you didn't type Chinese, would you consider Comac as an option? No, because it has little to do with Chinese. Oh, okay, so. No, I wouldn't consider Comac. Well, because, you know, I already typed Vorac since 1994. So, you know, I've been typing Vorac for 20, 25 years. There's no reason for me to switch to Comac. Now, let's, but suppose, suppose in 1994, Comac is already invented. You know, Comac was invented around 2005, okay. I, I don't like, I don't like Comac, you know, because, you know, so partly because I'm biased, you know, because I already used Vorac. So Comac to me is kind of this deviant, you know, they are trying to, this guy, he, he's trying to, you know, create a name for himself. You know, there's already Vorac, which is good, but he created one and he says, oh, this is more efficient than, than Vorac. Theref. So what he created, so what happens is there's a fork. So now, and and since Comac, there's many folks. That's why there are so many. But but the problem is, you know, you see, one of the important things is is, is that you want people to uh, bind together. You know, if you want to go efficiency, there's one Vorac. If you know, if that's the case, that's good because you have more and more people using Vorac, and possibly. Uh, quality will be obsolete, you know, people, every keyboard maker will just create Vorac and that's good for everyone. Okay, so in my eyes, the Vorac, the Comac is not good guy, you know, he just created, oh, this is my, this is my own Comac, you know, this is even better than Vorac. Actually, that's not true. You know, I talked, uh, I talked about that in, in the other video I mentioned, you know, for, for an hour, it's not true. You know, I, I have an article here, you can see. Uh, I don't want to click it, you know, because every time I click a link, it takes, you know, a minute or two. Anyway, so, so, so I, so it's kind of biased opinion. So I don't like Borak because he just created, you know, he, he just created his own, you know, he want to, of course, he become more famous, you know, instead of just, you know, joining the Borak user. Uh, it's a so my opinion of of Comac is a little bit biased, but I do have good reasons. You know, like I analyzed in one of the articles. In if you go to keyboard layout, you will see it. But anyway, so so but what if Comac is invented in 1994, before I even learned Vorac? Would I choose it? Uh, possibly. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's hard to say. It could. It's possible because. Then, because I, if I didn't know Vorac, then I have two cho two choices, you know, Vorac and Comac. Then I probably will hear, you know, the Co Comac's marketing, you know, talk. They will say, "Oh, Comac is modern, modern," you know, because the computer era, we can analyze keystrokes and so on, while the Vorac is like fifty, hundred years old. You know, back then you do you 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 don't have much ana you know, stati statistics, computer statistics stuff. So, you know, that's a lure, that's a lure of Comac, you know, so, so, 
yeah, so if I, you know, if if I didn't know Vorak, possibly I would choose uh, Cormac. Uh, okay, so you you use Cormac with pin in, that's fine. Okay, uh, so George George use Cormac. Okay, so Mister Splendid Dingo Dingo, where where are you from? What country? So Mister Splendid and Mister Splendid, where are you from again? Say it again. So Mister Splendid says, I plan to buy Ogo Docks till I found about Russ layout problem what is the rust layout problem a oh, russian oh oh yeah so so actually i don't recommend uh ergo docs okay if you want to go that route now first of all you can buy one of these you know one uh uh, yeah, so for example, Kinesis, so that's what I use. I also recommend this one, Kinesis Freestyle Edge. Uh, this, or Kinesis Freestyle Edge, these are easy choices. You can buy it on Amazon, you know. Uh, or, Automate Hacking is pretty good, but again, it's too few keys. Okay, so too few keys. Also, it's not, it's not auto linear. So in other words, the layout is not a grid, you know, rectangular grid. It it uses the traditional kind of slanted, you know, layout. So two major problems is the, you know, slanted layout, and and uh, too few keys. You know, it's only got sixty four keys. So too few keys, you can solve that problem. You can solve it by just buying a programmable keypad. So, you know, get a combination with you know get 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 this or or that. You know, that'll solve the problem or for your own for all of your one key packing needs. Like copy paste, you know, copy or you know uh, uh, select or copy paste. Like 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 what I do for example? I'm gonna show you. Okay look look at what I do so let me show you that okay so you can see and you can see my screen okay so you can you see my screen I press this key select all copy switch to last window okay that's not what I want I want to switch to Emacs okay now open a new buffer paste you see it's select or copy paste. It's all one thing, one finger key press. N never do code. Like I never do control something. Like like you, you can see in my Emacs, XAR start command log mod. Okay. So go to the top of buffer. You see the my keys will show up on the left window. So you can delete this section go down or go up go down you can delete this section go up enter paste that section paste paste previous for example and uh, now I want to close the buffer okay again one key look at my finger <laughs> okay I, I, I well I'm I don't I'm not going to move the camera but anyway one key okay close the buffer Okay, it, it asks me, do I want to save? Then no. On the left, you see that. You see, that means super W. I mean, that means command W. But actually, I'm pressing one key because it's uh, programmed via my operating system because, the, because this keyboard, this keypad is a numerical keypad. It's not a programmable keypad. So I have to use Mac OS to program it. Okay. That is why when I press a key, that does close window. So when I press a key, that actually does Command W on the Mac. So that that is why you see this uh, this thing here. But actually, it's just one key. But on the meanwhile, but if you look at on my Emacs, you can see it's all single key, like. Uh, Showing browser. Again, the key 
to show in browser is also a single key but it because it's programmed so that's why it shows two keys so um Okay, but Jamin, but Jamin says Core Mac, you can do copy paste, same as Quarty, so it is nice. No, it's it is not nice. Actually, that is a flaw of Core Mac. Um, I talked about that in this article. Okay, in detail, that actually gives you repetitive strain injury. You know, so I talked about this in my articles. Many of these uh, layout designs, let me show you that. Uh, so let's go to uh, keyboard layouts, uh, which is here. And you go to uh, alternative layouts and you go to go down, go down, you go to the core Mac. OK. So let me read it. OK. Layouts such as mini Mac, Cropper, Asset, Norman, Core Mac have one thing in common. They all keep many quality keys in same position. So it's supposedly easier to learn if you already touch type quality. Also, they keep the Z, X, C, V keys in the same position as quality so that the undo, cut, copy, paste keys don't change which actually induces repetitive strain injury. <laughs> Can you believe that? If you don't believe that, you have to read this article. C. Why undo cut shortcut key are bad? So I have a story here. I tell you. So you see, uh, two, so, so many of these layout, you know, by design, they think, you know, they, they want to keep the control cut, you know, copy paste keys as the same. You know, don't change, don't change the X, X, V, uh, X, C, V, and Z keys. You know, they think it's a good design, but actually it's not because, because when you consider, you see, you see, let's, let's look at undo. You know, typically undo, uh, let's go back. You see, undo is this key, right? Z. Now, which, which your, which, uh, one of your finger presses Z? If you touch type, that's going to be this finger. Okay, wait. So this is my right hand. This is my left hand. Why? Why is it re reversed? So this is my left hand. Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> I'm getting confused. This is my left hand. Uh, is it re reversed, guys? Can you? T uh, this is my left hand. Is it reversed? Like, do you see this on, um, anyway, so anyway, so when you press the Z key, you use your pinky, it's fine, okay. So when you press the Z key, you use your pinky, right? And undo is one of the most frequently, undo, good morning, Kathy, great to see you. Undo is one of the most frequently used shortcuts so imagine they whenever you press undo they want you to use pinky you think that's good that's no good that you know that's not ergonomic you know on one hand it, this is this is supposed to be a ergonomic layout but then they try to keep the shortcuts to be an ergonomic <laughs> what's a, what a idiocy Anyway, anyway, so so it is a flaw, you know. This, so I think these people they they didn't think about that. They they didn't look into too much in depth, you know. They they you know just because they are designing a letter layout, they you know so they are just concerned about letter layout, and they you know they, then they they think that oh let's just keep keep the Z, 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 X, C, W in the same place so that, you know, the shortcuts works the same. That's not, that's not right. Because the shortcut is also pressed by your fingers. So that's also, you know, there's uh, ergonomic issues. So this problem actually happened to me. So back, so uh, let me tell you about the story. Uh, wait, where? Um, you know, because I was using 
uh, I was using this keyboard yeah I explain in de detail I back then so this is around uh, this is 2012 okay in 2012 I was using this keyboard this is the rubber dome keyboard and and back then I was using you know I'm a Emacs user and I was using the Ergo, Ergo Emacs mod okay and it has a feature such that let me let me show you that such that when you want to cut you don't have to make a selection like normally in Emacs you have to make a selection then you cut you know then you cut okay but but I have a function you don't need to do that let me show you okay so so look at my command course on the left window so I want to cut I just press one key no no need to selection okay undo I want to cut this line press one key no selection and what if I want to cut multiple lines for example I go here cut 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 you see look at the left side it's all I'm I'm using Vorax so it's all Q key you see six times so I can continue to cut 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 I can I can hold down cut you know it, it'll cut the whole buffer okay you see it's all cut now I open a new buffer paste it you see everything is together all the things I cut you know is here okay now close this close this, close this. don't save reopen yeah we are back okay so so we so in Emacs in Ergo Emacs mod I created a, a command such that you can cut without needing to select it also you can hold it down and you will cut multi multiple lines so I find this so convenient I stopped you know s suppose I want to delete this paragraph I stopped making a selection you know I stopped making a selection then delete I, I stopped doing that I just you know I just started to cut 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 I just do this you know hold it down you know I started to do that so that means I started to press this key a lot you know this this X key I started to press that a lot with this finger you know with this um, let's see th this uh, ring finger um, and one day I started to have pain okay uh, what is the what is my you know I, 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 I detailed them here so in 2012 using ergonomic ergonomic keyboard but with a rubber dome keyboard so the Microsoft natural ergonomic 4000 I actually developed RSI syndrome my hand ting tingles yeah so my hand tingles uh, so actually I have I have a detailed reason here this you know this is serious because back then it was panic like you don't know you don't know you don't know what caused it you know all I know is that I started to have this uh, tingling I know it's going to be pain if I don't care because you know I, I know about this RSI uh, so the story is here okay so the story the complete story is this one so written in 2012 uh, and this the cause of this problem is with the X and S keys the reason I started to press X a lot is because that cut you know that cut thing no good so let me describe the horror okay uh, you know I want to find a section where I, I was panicking because you know because you are a programmer you need to <laughs> you need to type to eat okay to 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 make money once once you cannot type you got a problem so back then okay I don't remember where do, do I say it but I have to read it you know it's a long article but anyway let me just tell you so I started to have this tingling I mean it's it's, it's serious because you don't know you don't know what you did wrong you don't know maybe the keyboard is wrong or maybe you didn't eat well or you know or something you didn't sleep well or something you don't know
but you you just have this pen, you know, and it's every day. Like maybe today, but you think, oh, tomorrow you'll be fine. But tomorrow it's again. So so when this happens to you, it it could happen to any of you, okay? Or when you get older after ten years or five years, it'll it'll come, okay? It happens to you, and you don't know. You, you know, typically it's very hard to find out exactly what, you know, what is causing it. You don't know. So one day this happened. Eventually, after a month. Okay, here, 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 here is a paragraph. Okay. You know, this is my blog. I wrote it at the at the time. You know, my left hand is fucked. Emacs wasn't sure what's causing it. Now I know. It's a key that requires using fourth and fifth fingers, while hand is in standard touch typing position. Actually, mostly the undo, cut keys, and the standard save and select all keys. Yeah, that that um, that was uh, causing it. Okay, I did I did not describe the panic much. Uh, it just you know. The first sentence: My left hand is fucked. You know, at that time, I remember. You know, it's it's pretty bad because you panic because then you have to see a doctor. I I don't have I don't have money to see a doctor. You know, so you and I I know a lot of people like e, they email me. You know, they've seen doctors or horror stories. So 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 anyway, back to the topic. So that is why I'm telling you that this shortcut Z. S X C W. That's no good. Okay, you don't want that. You see, this happened to me in particularly because I was using this keyboard. Now, normally this is an ergonomic keyboard and it, it's all good. However, it's rubber dome. That's a problem. Rubber dome is no good. You want me mechanical keys. If you, if I have me mechanical keys, then back then I may not have that problem. Yeah, so this I think after this I you know so after this I stopped. I think after a year in two thousand three or so I stopped using these keys. I started to use mechanical keys, the truly ergonomic keyboard. Uh, I ha I have a review here. I know I know where to find it, but let's skip that. Let's go back to read the comments. So so let me warn you guys okay don't do you know when you you know the for those copy cut paste be careful the best thing is actually to make f1 f2 f3 f4 to be to be select or select or cut copy paste like like i just showed you know with my keypad one key you know you never press control something uh things like that so let's read the comments and that that will be it for today so maybe let's talk for five more minutes uh yeah or if you have any more key keyboard questions key binding questions uh paste it okay so it has more advanced programmable behaviors so Dingo says, I find so many of the keys being in the same position on Core Mac a little confusing com uh, compared to Vorak when switching from QWERTY. Okay. Uh, okay, so so Miss Splendid says, by the way, I bind it copy and paste on extra mouse keys. Yeah, that's good too. Uh, because my mouse right now you know, it's 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 this one. Uh, I cannot show it. My mouse is this one, Logitech. Um, Logitech. Uh, shit. You know, it's it's got this great thing. It's um, this spins forever. Like it's it can spin up to thirty seconds. <laughs> you know, this is fantastic. So I can show you, for example. If I go to browser, uh, if I go to, let's open a new window, new, um, go to blog, I can just spin it, you see? 
it's still spinning you know you need to go to a really long page and it will just keep spinning let's go to uh, let's go to my keyboard blog I mean my programming blog okay oh, uh, oops. so you see you see my hands is here you know so I can stop it anytime I can I can quickly go to places I want and stop it it will just spin and and when I want to stop I just uh, you know put my hand on the wheel so you guys buy it uh, let me show you the mouse okay how to choose a mouse you know all the all the things you ever wanted to know about mouse it's all here so the that one is actually here and I do have a video showing the spin Okay, so you need to, you guys need to buy it. Buy it, and I make a dollar or so. Yeah, half a dollar, 50 cents. Okay, so anything else? Uh... So yeah, I was saying I have that mouse, but this mouse do, does not have as many keys as I wish. So let me demo. Okay, so let me show you what, you know, you need to look at my, so there is my mouse. And if I go here, my browser, so you see these two buttons, they are previous tab, next tab, you see. So I don't, I don't have to leave my hand. I, you know, I don't have to go back to keyboard to switch tab. You know, previous tab, previous tab, previous tab, and and this button on the thumb here, it's close tab. Okay. I don't have um. Anyway, so this button is close tab. Let me, let me show it again. Close. Okay. Reopen it. Oh wait, I need to reopen, 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 reopen. Okay, so, and uh, and these two buttons, thumb buttons, are back, backward and forward. For example, I go to Unicode, I can scroll down, and backward, back, uh, previous, forward backward forward you know it, it just go to previous uh, link page so this mouse does not have that many buttons you know one two three four five five extra buttons so you have previous tab next tab close tab backward forward so it's you know but I have another mouse that has like 20 buttons so I have so I have those and I also have copy paste select all and uh, and other things volume up volume down things like that so that's so that's why I also recommend a um, let's close this you know I recommend a multi-mouse I mean if you are a gamer if you are a RPG gamer then you know uh, you know you know how useful it is but if you are a programmer this is how useful it is because for programmers you need to browse web all, all the time you know reading documentations or you need to especially if you work in Windows Visual Microsoft Visual Studio things like that you can press a key to compile and stuff and things like that uh, you know, so that's about mouse. That's about, you know, extra buttons on mouse.
how about remapping map uh, caps lock to escape if you are using VI are you using VI Kathy so if you are using VI that's that's an excellent thing to do uh, yes so Mr. Splendid says I have map caps to layout switch EN Russia okay great yeah I think that's a great thing to do so George George says not sure about mapping caps to escape but my philosophy is uh, use pinky fingers little as possible yeah that makes sense too you know one technique about pinky is that you you don't want to move the finger you want to like just use the whole hand so you so when you want to press the caps lock you just move it over there and just um, let me try to do it just move it there and just push the entire palm down don't don't like move your finger okay I think that's it for today uh, in in USA yeah you do have you you need money to see a doctor uh, unless you are in Canada or northern Europe where you have like universal health care things like that Benjamin Benjamin where are you from uh, you know even today I have I have a uh, repetitive strain injury like this is strange like it's over here okay I can show you it's here it's just it's some area here you know it's like here I had this kind of pen it's not really really a pen but it's kind of pen and it's not tingling so usually I do this you know this is a metal I mean the stone ball you know so I do this it feels good and so I, I you know this I had this like for a year and I cannot find out exactly what is the problem you know usually yeah usually when you have a repetitive strain injury usually it's hard to pin that pin down uh, so so this time I have this issue I don't I don't know what's causing it I I cannot um, you know I cannot figure out why Oh, Benjamin is from Scotland so they have a free universal health care something like that you can see doctors for free so green deck says my friend has palm has pain in left hand what advice can I give him he's unlikely to switch layout or something as far as I know he uses many three key shortcut <laughs> in some IDE just tell him tell him don't do that that's worse you know switching layout like like there are two things about layout one is the the what people think of that is let letter layout for example Vorak QWERTY uh, you know that's uh, about the arrangement of letter letter keys okay so when people talk about layout they are thinking of that now this is actually less important than shortcut layout. Now shortcut layout in in Unix, Linux, Emacs, it's usually called key binding. But on Windows or Photoshop, you call them shortcuts. Shortcut is also a layout. For example, on Photoshop, you have you have Control C, Control Control C to switch to some tool, Control A for other tool. I mean, not Control A, but you know, then Control Option something to change other tool things like that in Photoshop uh, and this is true for video editing for 3d software like like uh, render what's a uh, blender for example 3d software uh, you know a lot of computer workers they they you know artists or digital media you know they, they work with Photoshop so you have you know especially in those programs video editing Photoshop you have lots of you know uh, key shortcuts 
So shortcuts are actually a layout, and same thing in Emacs. You know, if you are using traditional Emacs key binding, it's all about control something, control X, control C, control X T. You know, you know those shortcuts. Now, if you lock your keystroke, you will know that most programmers you press shortcuts more often than you type. Okay, I have a statistics. Statistics. You know, it's on my website. You know, I, I don't. I don't want to go to link. I don't want to go to, you know, open that, because then it will take another two minutes. Anyway, you know, just read my website. Just search for Xali Emacs. Uh, key binding statistics. You'll find it. Xali Emacs key binding statistics. So anyway, I found that you know by statistics, I I I learned that for at most programmers. The 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 keystrokes you press that are for shortcuts is actually more than than you typing letters. Okay, so therefore, shortcut uh, shortcut layout is actually more important. So you know because you use that more often. So you want to be concerned about shortcut layout design. So all all the articles here. All the articles on this page are related to shortcut design. Like what ch what choice? You know which key binding is the best for copy? Which key binding is the best for paste? You know if you are using Photoshop, you know how do you design sh shortcuts for Photoshop? You know so this this page uh, are articles about that. So I would recommend you tell your friend. Okay, you you tell your friend just just buy a uh, keypad, buy one of these you know programmable keypad. Depending on on what he's doing, you know, Photoshop or what whatever. I mean, depending on how many keys he need. So you know, you you either have twenty keys or you have like you know sixty keys. So tell him to buy a programmable keypad. And tell him to stop using Control something, Control Alt, you know something. Just never do that. I like I don't do that. I haven't been doing that for like five years, uh, four four or five years. You know, in Emacs with soft like keys, I you know I almost never, I never type you know Control something. For example, cut, paste, you know paste paste. And if you look at the left window, it's all single key. There's no uh, for example, close this buffer. Okay, so it's closed. Close this buffer. Um, you know, I don't do a control meta something combo. I think that's it. So uh, let's see. Uh, two more. Let me read two more comments. As far as I know, they use many 3D key shortcuts. Yeah, tell your friend, don't stop doing that. Off topic. So George says, have you heard of Symphony OS? Andreas Klein. Uh, not Symphony OS. It's called Serenity OS. No, I have not. I may. I don't remember. Serenity operating system. So, do they have a Wikipedia? I guess not yet. So, let's go to GitHub then. Uh, so, Seren Serenity OS. So, what is about? About. I always wonder what we. Uh, what it would be like to write my own operating system, but I never took it seriously until now. Serenity is the lo love letter to 90s user interface with a custom Unix-like core. It flatters with sincerity by stealing beautiful idea from various other operating systems. Okay, so I guess it's a personal project. My take is now. Nah. <laughs> I mean, okay, here's here's the thing. First of all, I let's assume, okay, this is a great programmer. Okay, he's capable. He's one of the best programmer in the world, and he he knows the operating system well. He knows computer science, you know, well, so he can create this 
beautiful, most useful and practical operating system. But however, it's not going to fly, okay? Because in practice, you know, Mac, Windows, uh, Linux, that 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 is dominant. You, when you use a computer, you need operating system, but you also need lots of applications. That is the main thing. I mean, as a user, you actually don't care about operating systems. You need a lot, huge amount of applications. You need Photoshop and uh, Microsoft Word, you know, for business people, you know, spreadsheet and so on, and Emacs. And these companies, they are not going to port it to your operating system, okay? Unless you are, you know, unless you are Google. <laughs> so this is like, a, this is a dead end, okay? That's my opinion. But, you know, possibly in 20 years, it will be a mainstream and it will be fantastic. Yeah, but I'm not even sure I'll be around in 20 years. So for the future, it's a good thing. But, you know, so but for me, uh, I see it kind of, it's kind of, well, it's a hobby, you know. So if you enjoy hobby, you know, it's good. So that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. So today's topic is all about keyboards and key binding and layout. So that's very good. Thank you guys. If you like my stuff, you know, do my Patreon. I have my Patreon link uh, all over my pages, like uh, most of my pages at the bottom, Patreon or PayPal, if you like my stuff. Bye, guys.